Hello, welcome back to Better Strategy Life Noding. In this episode, I want to share some kind of setup and workflow that allows you to bring animation from Loom, Loom app uh, on the iPad into Blender. So the whole setup is very interesting and I want to share this even if you don't have iPad because this is kind of like importing lots of frames of um, SVG into Blender. Um, and the result is, as you can see below, and this is actually uh, simply this one is the, the most simplest example uh, it's simply bringing all this the sequence of svg they are all coming in the like this um, in the collections and the setup i have here is actually utilizing um, animation nodes and the setup is looking something like this slightly complicated but it's not actually that super complicated. It's actually very, very simple. It's simply um, about reordering um, these collections. Even though, even if the name is slightly weird, you can easily reorder it um, as long as there is a sequence. In this case, 0 to 11. Okay? So, first of all, Loom animations is looking a bit like this. So, everything is uh, vectors vector artwork so it's very simple and you can when it's you bring it it's almost like slightly like grease pencil okay so the one i have here is super simple it's, a, it's just the shapes on a single layer a, a single color if we, we bring it you bring it using svg so scalable factor graphics and this is really scalable is it's basically coming in as a curve objects in blender and i imported the svg first of all from loom into photop photop.com and then i save it as a proper svg layer by layer anyway let's see how uh, it actually works so i can close this look at the the node setup we started from the left side, okay? So I'm using expression simply to get the bty.data.collections. It's just simply grabbing all the collections. If you have some kind of other collections, you just get rid of it. So I don't, because I don't have filter here, but that's basically getting all the collections within this single blend file. And then I put it into generate list and this is the first loop simply getting the name get the name of the collections so the name is of course f0 f1 you can see if we are sorting it by default the naming because there's a there's a this zero padding uh, the sequence is wrong 1 10 11 so this is common issue and you need to sort it out so this is how i sort it out this one new order will sort it you, you see the, the red color new order script and the script is looking something like below this is actually just a slightly uh, something that i changed to work with the setup so it's basically getting getting all the, the sequence and then reorder it based on that. So this is the Python code for that. The ordered one is sorted and the unordered one as input. And so we have some kind of natural order. So this is after, before, after. So now that we have a good sequence, we can simply use this. Uh, with the green one, we get the name and turn it back into collections so that's very step by step very procedural and then you bring the new list of collections all ordered and nicely and this is the final one simply hide render or hide viewport based on the frame so if the frame is for example frame is five if the frame equal the number if the index collection here equal of the frame simply get the logic one or zero and then I invert it and then this become on and off thing 
So you can see as I scrub on the frame, you can see the white color that's visible, the rest of them is invisible. So that's why we have these animations. It's basically almost like a flipbook based on the collection. So if we have like a, an icosphere, let's see if this let's see if this is working. So we have icosphere. If I put icos if I put this icosphere, let's have like a three frame of icosphere. If I put this guy into I think I need to oh yeah this one goes to six this one goes to seven I'm holding command I want to drag this into seven <clears throat> so for three frames there we have icosphere based on the collections so this is also good for 3D objects, not just uh, SVG. And then with SVG here, um, because because this is a curve, curve is actually something that you can easily translate into grease pencil objects. So something to notice there. Convert to grease pencil from curve. So this guy uh, seems to be escaping, <laughs> but you can bring it back, move it back into F5 now. So this guy is a grease pencil object. And that's the special guy, of course, now becoming a um, grease pencil curve. It has GP, it's, it has its own layer, it has its own materials, and you can give you the different fill materials and then also you can turn on the stroke and not many people who never use people who never use blender probably didn't know this is actually like really really powerful all right so for animators you can actually work this way it's a uh, turning on and off based on the scene collections and ideally of course from here if you are just in Blender, uh, in Blender and you're rendering it out, you can pick a camera, select a camera, and then render. Right, that's Blender thing. If you are if you're doing it for AR, um, it's not automatic way, but this is actually pretty close to being able to export it out. Export based on the collection sequence as. Um, something like GLB. It's, a, it's actually definitely possible, but turning on and off uh, like this is uh, is not common. It's actually quite heavy for a lot of machine, but as this is actually pretty close. Normally, when you're thinking about animations, you're thinking about shape keys, bone animations, and then transform animations. The one that's changing based on the collections, something like Alembic, is actually quite heavy. Um, but it's definitely possible in the near future. Anyway, um, yeah, hopefully this is useful. It's very simple animation nodes, and I have actually Spherechalk nodes um, that's actually dealing with the <coughs> stroke and fill. So this I can easily change the stroke and the fill and uh, thickness of the curve using this uh, simple setup. So again, this is like using nodes. To drive and control the parameter of whatever anything in um, any objects in Blender is easily controlled by the nodes. All right. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, hopefully this is useful. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.